Well, I'm going to read from verse 13 all the way to verse 15. John 12, verse 13 to 15. The Bible says, So they took palm branches and went out to meet him. Everyone was shouting, Lord, be our Savior. Blessed is the one who comes to us, sent from Yahweh, the King of Israel. Then Jesus found a young donkey and rode it on to fulfill what was prophesied. People of Zion, have no fear. Look, it is your king coming to you riding on a young donkey. Amen? Amen. People of Zion, people of Vancouver, people in CCC, our family, have no fear. We serve a great God. King, the King of kings, the Lord of lords. And just as he, we have established that his name is King, we need to reverence him as a king. Hallelujah. We need to worship him with fear and trembling. He is holy. He is worthy of our praise. Amen. So as we are here, I just want us to open up our mouth and just thank him. Thank God. Thank Jesus Christ. For, for taking on that burden, Amen. taking our sins and our transgression. Thank, you, Lord. thank him for loving you despite of your shortcomings. Thank, you, thank him that he saw that he needed us, we needed a savior, that it has given us the privilege to once again be connected to the Father. The Bible says that no one can come to God except through Christ. So thank God for his son who died on the cross Amen. and who was resurrected. We exalt you, Hallelujah. our King we'll you, of God. Israel. We exalt you. We crown you King. You are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Father God, we exalt you this afternoon. We are so grateful that we're able to see this day. Lord God, as I always say, every single day, to, every day is a privilege to come before you to thank you. We are joyful. We are thank thankful for all that which you have done in our lives, in our family. Thank you, Lord God, for the testimony, for the blessing, for your protection over our lives. You said, people of Zion, have no fear. I pray, Lord God, as children of God, that we'll walk in authority We'll walk in confidence. We'll walk in boldness to know that we serve a king who is ruler of the universe. Father God, you're omnipotent, omniscient. You are all powerful, all knowing. Father God, we lift up our voice this afternoon and say, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for taking on the burden. Thank you, Lord, for healing us. Thank you, Lord, for renewing us. Thank you, Lord God, for forgiving us of our sins and our transgressions. The blood that was shed on the cross of Calvary. Lord God, it was not in vain. Thank you, Lord, for that blood that enables me, gives me the privilege to stand before you. Thank you, Jesus, for taking the lashes, the pain, the suffering. Thank you, Lord, for your love, your unconditional love that compelled you to save us. We didn't even know that we needed saving. But we come before your throne once again to say thank you. Thank you, Lord, for your pursuit. Thank you, Lord God, for you were relentless in your pursuit to man. That, Lord God, you are calling us home. You are calling us daughters and sons. Help us, Lord God, to know our identity in you. Help us to not take for granted what you did for us, Lord God. You died and you resurrected. Yes, and I pray that, Lord God, as we are new creations upon salvation, that, Lord, that our old, the old version of us will have died. And that, Lord, that each and every day that we walk forward, I pray that we will reflect you. We will reflect you as our Savior. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Some of us, we don't think that we're deserving of your love. But thank you, Jesus, for loving us despite of our sins 
and our flaws and our mistakes. Father God, we come before you. We lay it down at the altar. We lay it down at your feet, asking for mercy, asking for grace, asking, Lord God, for strength to walk in obedience and holiness, Lord God. I pray that our lives will be a reflection of your glory. I pray as your children, Lord, that will be obedient of your word. I pray that those who are hungry for you, they will come to you. They will come to you. You are the living water. It says, come to me, those who thirst. Father God, I pray that we'll be refilled, we'll be replenished. Father God, may you not leave us. Father God, sometimes in our walk with you, we stumble. We fall short, Father God, I pray for your mercy. We pray, Father God, for strength to walk in holiness and righteousness. I pray that our eyes will be set before you. King of kings, we bow down before you. You are worthy of our praise. You are worthy of our praise. You are a good friend. You are an amazing friend that you died on the cross for our sins, that you took away our burdens. Thank you, Jesus. And you've given us a lighter yoke. Thank you, Lord, for anyone tuning in online. I pray that, Lord, may they know they can find a friend in you, that you are their friend, you are their companion, you are their God, you are their Redeemer. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Can we take a moment and lay down anything, anything that you have not surrendered to Jesus? It may be the pain and affliction of this world. It may be anything that has happened in your childhood, in your past. It may be fear. It may be anxiety. It may be illness, whatever it is, sin that you have hidden from God. May you give it to him. May you surrender to him because he is God and he's powerful. He's able to clothe you and renew you. So at this time, once again, for a few seconds, lay everything down at the feet of Jesus. Lay it all down because if you, did, if you don't, you are making a mockery of his death. He has taken away that yoke, but you still hold it on. Give it to him. Give it to him. Give it to him, your family. Give it to him. Your fears. Give it to him. Your anxiety. Give it to him. He's able. He can take it. Father God, as a ministry, as the body of Christ, Lord, we are laying everything, anything that is holding us back from receiving you, from being more intimate with you. We're laying it all down. Once again, we say thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the cross. Hallelujah. Thank you for the cross. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your love. Thank you, Lord. Even though you said, in, in, on, even on the cross, you wanted to say, let your will be done. Amen. Father God, help us. Help us to not take advantage of what you have done for us as your children. To you be the glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your presence. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness. We worship you. Glory be to your holy name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord.
been faithful all of our lives since the moment you were born till the very moment you take your last breath God will continue to be faithful it is in him that's his character you know as human beings we have our flaws sometimes you can be faithful to someone and because of how you feel you stop being faithful you stop or break your commitment but God is faithful all of our lives he has been true to his character he's faithful is loyal is loving he's amazing despite of our sins that sometimes separate us but the Bible says that there's no sin that can separate us from the love of God but because he's holy and there's no darkness in him it is us who stray away it is us who go an other path but because of his love because of his love he continues to call us home so as we sing the chorus of the song once again thank god for his faithfulness in your life even in the days that you do not deserve it he showed you favor in the times that you do not deserve it he showed you mercy he has been faithful from the beginning so let's thank him let's worship him if you're going through a situation you are questioning and doubting God think back of the days think back in the times and you will see that his track record is clean he has not failed you he has not abandoned you he's a good father he's an exceptional friend so once again as we, as we sing this chorus remember remind yourself tell yourself encourage yourself in the situation that you're in that God is faithful God is faithful his word will not return to him void we serve a good father so once again as we sing this chorus let's acknowledge his faithfulness hallelujah Glory be to your holy name. Thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness. Thank you, Lord, God, for your provision, for your protection, for your covering, for your favor, even for your rebuke. Because you love us. You want the best for us.
God is good and all the time I can't hear you I want to hear the Sunday school guys I want to hear, I want to hear you shouting is that right? all the time God is good is that right Renan? God is good all the time let me hear again your voice God is good and all the time Amen. God is, can we just put our hands together? Because God is good and all the time he has been so gracious to me, to you, to each and everyone at this time of the day. Lord, we say thank you at this time. Before we can hear the word of God, quick announcements for, uh, as a church. First of all, is to welcome each and everyone at this time of the day. Yeah, we feel um, uh, honored to have you here at this time. God bless you all. So this coming week, it's a quite a busy week. Just wanted to give a quick announcement. Tomorrow we're having quick uh, leaders meeting at 7.30. So we'll not be having our Bible study because it's very urgent. We need to meet and have a few details ahead of time of us. Um, nevertheless, we'll continue to take notes and we'll make sure all the notes that are taken today will be projected to the following uh, week for Bible study. So we don't want to miss any teaching or for the whole month we've been hearing how we can really give ourselves to God to grow spiritually. Kingdom life is about you be connected with God. So we fall short most of the time, but nevertheless, he's a great God. So we need to make sure we take notes and through those notes will generate questions. Please, we're going to send the, the questions today. Continue to study your questions very well. And by the grace of God, we'll figure out that the following week, we are going to venture into the remaining all the questions that we still have and we need to finish. So we can have at least a small, I'm hoping to generate a small booklet for all this teaching. We may have a booklet about kingdom life and then all the questions, all the resumes from the preacher that will be incorporated, incorporated into that little booklet. So at least it's a very good basic foundation to anyone who wants to know Christ, who wants to move in the knowledge who, of who God is. This coming Friday, we're having Good Friday service. As for, for, for some of us, we know it's always about our meeting at 10 o'clock at Pastor Julius Church at Westwood Community Church. But this time, it's going to be at 7 o'clock. 7 o'clock? Is it 7 o'clock? You don't know the time? I'm going to send you a, a, a note. I don't know if you have a, a PowerPoint on that one, but uh, this coming Friday, watch only message. Please continue to search and to check on your Telegram, church Telegram, WhatsApp, group, any social media, our ways of communication. Um, we are going to make sure that really we give you the exact time we're going to be there. I would like to invite the church. Please, if you're not traveling anywhere at this time, please make your way all the way to uh, Port Coquit to Coquitlam. We're going to give you itineraries. There's no point of waiting. If you want to, for, if you want to go with someone, praise the Lord, hallelujah. But we, we're all meeting. At that, if you can be there by 6.30, that would be great because I know the service starts at 7 o'clock. But we're going to double check the time and make sure that you're not coming late because... They are going to have a lot of people. We don't want you to be standing or be far from what's happening. 
please, can you cut your music a little bit, Amani? Wait for a music, please. Um, also, um, for the course of that, it's, it's, it's happening on Friday, there will not be any music, music practice. So don't show up on Friday here about music practices. No, rather we're going to have our prayer on Wednesday. We're going to carry our prayer Wednesday as usual. We'll be here from 7 to 9 p.m. for prayers, but not the time for our music practice because we'll all be going to uh, this particular fellowship with the Lord. Amen, amen. Yeah. So this coming, uh, at the beginning of April, we're going to introduce a Sunday school with all our children. It's a time we're preparing all the material. Everything needs to be put into place so our children, they can learn uh, ways of digesting the word of God at the level of that. Because sometimes what has been discussed here, our little one, youth, they can understand because they, they are youth, they can sometimes filter information. But for the little one, they are having difficulties. So I've got a request from uh, different par parents. And also we need to honor their ministry. As we are growing, they should also grow in the knowledge of the same Bible that it has been used to preach the gospel. At least it can be the same message, but prepare at their level of understanding. You have to remember a child has got only half an hour concentration. They can only fo focus for 10 feet. That's why you see at the, young, at the primary school or kindergarten, they always have a lot of breaks because after 10, 15 minutes, a child cannot focus. They have to break, they have to do another session, they have to go to this, they have to take one. So they always have this moment. To keep our children for an hour, for 50 minutes, it can be kind of a, a punishment because they may not understand what we are doing. But if we give them the ways of engaging in the, into the word of God at their level of understanding with her scriptures, with her colors, or uh, things they can, they, 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 they can color, uh, watching some video that explain the, the, the dynamics of their Bible study, uh, it can be very, uh, very fruitful because we know children, they are very visual. Unless if they don't see, there's a very, uh, chances are that they may not really understand what is happening. We are going to invite our dear brother, the evangelist Arnold, to give us the word of God. And we believe that we are all tuned spiritually to receive from the Lord this particular uh, time of the word that will change your life, my life, and the lives of those who are fellowship with us online. May God bless you. As you are living in your house at this time, grab a piece of paper, grab your pen, your Bible, sit really seriously, be serious from your house, and let's engage from far. May God visit you. We are just praying that we all be connected. Let's try to understand the reason of this season. Christ is risen. We have to understand those are the basic foundation of believers. So if they ask you a question, why, why are you a, Christ, uh, a Christian? There are things that we have to answer immediately because those are the things that unite us always. Amen, amen. amen. Please let, help me to welcome our dear brother. <laughs> brother Nord. Amen. God is good. And all the time. Thank you. Let us pray. God in heaven, we bless your mighty name. On this Sunday, Father, we say thank you. You love us so much, and you send your only son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross. Through him, in him, by him, we may have everlasting life. So, Father, thank you, Jesus Christ, for the price you paid on the cross. Thank you, Father, for lifting us, Father God, to be used by you, to be guided by you for the purpose of your kingdoms. Lord, as we, we are gathering here at this time, Father, I pray that your power of the Holy Spirit be manifested in us through us, Father God. Let through the teaching of your words may the blind see, the sick may heal, 
and any spirit that does not honor your name may be scattered. Father, we give ourselves into your obedience. Guide us. Use us. Give us an undivided attention so we may be present in your presence. We bless your name, Father. And Father, I pray for those who are following us from the comfort of their home. Father, I pray that they may dedicate these hours in your presence so you may minister to them for your glory. We give you the glory and honor. Lord, use me as I'm standing here. Use me just as an instrument in whom you're going to pass through to touch your people. I bless your name, and I surrender myself before your throne of glory. In your name, Jesus, we have prayed. Amen. God is good. And all the time, say thank you to God. Today, some uh, denomination I celebrate the Palm Sunday. It's a Sunday in which Jesus came to Jerusalem. They, they, they welcomed him as a king. But a few days after, the same Jesus that they welcomed as a king, they're going to say crucified him. And without the crucifixion, there is no the forgiveness of our sin. Amen. So, by God's grace, I've been standing before you Paul, for the past last Sunday in the message, say, the kingdom's life. Amen? And in which God has been spoke to us how we need to grow before him. And uh, since you're saved by Christ, therefore, you don't remain a child. You need to grow. Amen? And we saw the key point that led us to grow. The first one was a conversion. The second one was the identity. The third one was a sin. The fourth was the grace. The fifth was faith. Six the Holy Spirit, seventh, the scripture, eight, prayer, okay, I should ask, nine, church, ten, given, eleven, and twelve. Amen. <laughs> God is good. Today is our 12th point. It would have been easier for us to go in introduction of the kingdom life and just go enumerate all those points one by one and pass. But by God's grace, God wanted us to spend a few minutes to develop each one of them. But I believe, as we are moving on, each point is another sermon. Because there is a lot to discover in each point. But because we don't have all day to stand here, that's why I went quickly in each point. And today in our kingdom's life, key is to spiritual growth. The essential of spiritual growth Today is our final point. Amen. So we thank God for your presence. And we thank God believing that you're going to go and study each one of them. And try to relate how those points applied into your life. Amen. As I just said earlier, today, the Palm Sunday, in Jerusalem on those days, they welcomed Jesus as their king. But a few days later, they said crucified him. But in God's agenda, that was the purpose of Jesus coming to earth. Amen? 
So for us, it might be a surprise why they have to crucify him. But with, without crucifixions, there is no a kingdom's life. Amen. And today, the 12th point is a temptation. What is a temptation? A temptation is the battle of spiritual growth. We need to be clear that the temptation to sin we face in Christian life is not from God. Amen? And we're going to read that in the book of James 1, 13 to 14. What does the Bible say? No one undergoing a trial should say, I am being tempted by God. Since God is not tempted by evil, and he himself doesn't tempt anyone. But each person is tempted when he, when he is drawn away and enticed by his own evil desire. Amen? My brother and my sister, God never tempted you. In this scripture, they say, I like the scripture because if you are reading the Bible, any words on that portion of the verse you are reading, you don't understand, you have your cell phone. Go and Google that words and try to understand what does it mean so you can get a full understanding of the scripture. Through the preparation of this message, it takes me much more time because I take in consideration you and I, both of us, the English is our second language. So if I read something on the Bible, I do not understand. I'm not going to include that on my notes. I have to find the meaning that is easy for me to understand and easy for you to understand. Amen. But there's one word says here, it say, in verse 14, it says, but each person is tempted when he is drawn away and enticed by his own evil desire. The key words over there is enticed. God did not untempted you. But when you see something and you feel that thing is good and you feel like you have to have it, you are being guided by your own desire. And by you fulfill that desire, by you going to fulfill that desire, you find yourself fall in that temptation and becoming a sin. Hallelujah. So God will never tempt you. After today's Sunday, if you sin, is on you. It's not on God. So the blame is going to be on you. So because you have heard my voice, the condemnation is on top of you. Don't, do not sin anymore. Hallelujah. God won't cause you to sin. And the evil can't make you sin. I repeat myself. God won't cause you to sin. And the devil can't make you sin. Satan can offer you a temptation and make it look inviting. But it cannot force you to sin. You have to cooperate. Are we together? The devil will never force you to sin. So every time when you sin, it's because you find it look good and you when you do it. What does the Bible say? When we go in the book of Genesis, the snake came to the woman and says, did God say that fruit? You should not eat? And since the devil said, the fruit started looking good. And she was enticed to go to get that fruit. The devil didn't go grab the fruit say, look at this fruit. What does God say about this fruit? No. The devil questioned the lady about the instruction that God gave. Amen? And by the devil questioning, 
the reality, the fruit started looking yummy. Therefore, she went on on grabbing the fruit and take a first bite. Hallelujah. That's why you and the temptation, in order for the temptation becoming a sin, you have to collaborate. Hallelujah. But God will never make you being tempted. The devil, the devil's power is influence and deceptions. Not cohesion or enforcement or menacing. I will explain myself over there. The devil power is for him to influence you. The devil power is for him to deceive you, to bring a deception to you. Hallelujah. But the devil cannot force you. The devil cannot come, start menacing you to say, you have to, you have to, you have to do it. No. But we fall because we feel that the pressure of the, of the, of the influence, we feel like the pressure of him uh, deceiving us, we have to collaborate. Let me give an example. You are at work. You just finished your career. And you are a Christian. You get to the job site for the first week, first month, three months pass. You have passed your promotions. And you start noticing your ability with the job you are doing, there's room for you to get the promotion. Now, people you are working under, they are not Christian. Their way of doing things is not godly. Starting from their languages and their way of doing things. Now, you feel like you are in their favor to grab that promotion. Therefore, you want to start to speak their language. You want to start behaving like them. And every Sunday, uh, every Friday after work, they stop at the pub on the way home to grab a beer. But every time they invite you, you say, no, I'm not coming. But now you start seeing, oh, if I continue like this, I might not get that promotion. Because I have to be with them. I have to be one of them. In reality, whether it's your boss or co-workers, they never force you to say, you have to come with us. But you see, the desire of you getting a promotion, you feel like now you have to collaborate with them so you can get that promotion. And if we put it in perspective, who is being tempted, who is going to collaborate with that lifestyle who is not yours. It's you, right? Because regardless of how much they can tell you, come with us, come with us. No, they didn't put a knife or a bullet on you. But it's you coming, trying to collaborate. Hallelujah. So, brother and sister, you have the right to say no. And the promotion does not come to people. It comes from God. The elevation comes from God, not from people. And if you don't get it, it, wasn't meant, it was not meant for you. So don't force yourself. Because the devil may, not, may make it look good. Hallelujah. Jesus experienced all our temptations without sin. And that we see it in the book of Hebrew 4.15. The Bible said this. For we do not have a higher priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who has been tempted in every way as we are, yet without sin. Hallelujah. Jesus, as a human being, so Jesus had a two nature. One, as a human being, Jesus know how to feel to be tempted. But as a divine, Jesus had the ability to overcome 
every temptation that came his way. Hallelujah. Therefore, we don't, we don't have a power on our own to conquer any temptation comes on our way. Because of Jesus, by his grace, therefore, we have the ability to overcome any temptation that comes our ways. Hallelujah. So, don't let evil put you on a guilt tribe or guilty conscience for being tempted. What am I mean by that? Your response, your response determines whether a temptation becomes sin or not. The problem with sin is that the devil uses a false advertising. Hallelujah. Jesus as a human being. We have a song when we grow up, we see, I didn't steal for nothing. I steal because I was hungry. I needed food. That's why the food, look, if the food was there, then I have no choice. I want to steal. We thought like that was an excuse, isn't it? No, it's not an excuse. So, your response to temptation is what's going to determine whether the temptation becoming a sin or not. You see, I don't have a, a monitor in my house. But as a church leader, they gave me the key to open this building and have a passcode for this building. But this monitor from Monday to Saturday, it's been sitting here doing nothing. But I may need one for preparing my preaching. So I can come and just sneak here because nobody see me and grab it. As every Sunday I'm standing here, I can be tempted to come to grab it. But I have the power to say no, to come when the pastor does not know, when any leader does not know, for me to come open the church and grab this monitor, take it to my house. As long as I come and do that, it's coming a sin because I've steal it. Hallelujah. How many times now in your life, when the temptation is there, you, you are here. And the devil is making his advertisement. You look at that. That's going to look good on you. That is good for you. That, you see, that person do, do not deserve that. You deserve it. It's the more the devil is doing the advertisement for it, the greater, the nicer its look, and the envious it's becoming to you. Now your response is what makes it becoming a sin. Hallelujah. Last Sunday I said, in a certain level of maturity on working with God, it's not just your action of going grab it. A mature Christian, as long as you have saying yes in your thought into a temptation without any actions, you have already sinned. God is going to rebuke you because in your mind, you have already sinned. That's why the Bible goes on by saying, if you look at a woman with an envious to be yours, you have already sinned. If you look at someone else belonging with an envious that that's supposed to be mine, you have already sinned. But for someone who's a young in, in Christianity, that might not be the case. But you who have understood the word of God, when you apply that into your thought, becoming a sin. Amen? So, brother and sister, the advertisement of the devil may look good, but it's not for your benefit. Sin almost never comes with a sticker that say, warning will cause death. Let me explain that. Sin produces death. The devil knows it. And when the devil is tempted you, he will never tell you, look, the sinful you are practicing now, 
the sin, this thing that is being tempted you, when you execute it, when you collaborate, this is the side effect of it. The devil will never show you the side effect. But as the one who has the light of the Holy Spirit, that's what you see. I say, sin almost never come with a sticker that say almost. Because as a son of God, you know it. But as the one who do not know God, sin does not come with a sticker. But the reason I put almost is because of you. You know God. You have the light on you. So it almost comes not with a sticker say, if you do this, you're going to die. My brother and sister, the devil is not in your favor. Amen? Sin looks attractive and its, and its price seems reasonable. But it always costs more than the advertising price. I repeat, my brother and sister, young men, young ladies, listen to this. Sin looks attractive and, and its price seems reasonable. It's cheap sometimes. But it always costs more than the advertised price. Where you, where you have still, nobody was there. And until now, nobody ever knew you are the one who steal. Hallelujah. But the truth of God is growing now in you. Guess what? Every day you're becoming guilty because you know you steal it. Where you kill, nobody was there. It was easy for you to do that abortion. For, it was easy for you to take it when your parent was not there. It was easy for you to insult that person when people were not there. It was easy for you to practice what you did. And until now, and sometimes until you die, nobody going to know about it. But the problem is this. The truth of God, the light of God is in you now. And you are dying by yourself. <laughs> now the price of it, you have to confess. And sometimes, God will tell you, go confess to the person you did it. And now compare yourself. The price when you did it to the price you have to go to talk to the person you did that wrong. Which one is more costly? Give the, give the answer to yourself. But yet, God is still calling you to repent. I didn't say that for you to say no, so I'll keep it. No, God is calling you to repent if you have sinned. Hallelujah. Satan's goal is to use sin to break our fellowship with God. The reason of temptation is the devil to cause you to sin. And once you have sinned, your fellowship with God he has been broken. Hallelujah. God created us to fellowship with him. In the Garden of Eden, God was going every day to fellowship with Adam and Eve. And as soon they have sinned, on their own, they run away. And God has to come to look for them. They didn't have any freedom to come to fellowship with God the way they used to, to, to fellowship with him. Why? Because they knew they have sinned. How do they sin? Because they were being tempted. How do they uh, do it? Because they collaborate to the temptation. Hallelujah. Now we get into our 13th point. The calling. Calling is the ministry of spiritual growth. Hallelujah. Calling is the ministry of spiritual growth. Your calling is the customized life purpose that God has shaped and fashioned and equipped for you in order to expand 
his kingdom and bring himself greater glory. So your calling, because I used not to like that word, but your calling is not just for you to stand here. Your calling is the gift, is the ministry that God has put into you for the service to other people that will bring glory to God. But on that gift of your calling, God has equipped you already, has fashioned you, has shaped you already with everything you need to fulfill that calling in the glory of his kingdom. Amen? And we see that in the book of Jeremiah uh, 29, 11, most of Christians know like that, know that scriptures. And the Bible says this. For I know the plans I have for you. This is the Lord's declaration. Plan for your well-being, not for disaster. To give you a future and a hope. Amen? Twelve. You will call to a future. You will call to me and come and pray to me and I will listen to you. Thirteen. You will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. 14. I continue on this one. On the scripture, I gave a money. I stopped just in 11, but I decided to continue on this because there's something that the Lord showed me after. I will be fine by you. On 14, the Lord said, I will be fine by you. So when you call God, in the place that nobody can see God, but you are the one going to find God. So God is doing kind of like a, the game of a hide and seek. And because he has called you, and you find him when you pray, when you call on him. Hallelujah. This is the Lord declaration. And I will restore your fortune and gather you from all the nations and places where I banish you. I found it funny when I was reading this verse. So here in this verse, the Lord is saying, I banish you to reach some areas, to reach some places. But the Lord here is saying, I will restore your fortune and gather you from the nation and places where I banish you. So the Lord is going to make you even in the place that he told you not to go. At this time, the Lord is going to establish his authority in you. In the same place the Lord told you not to go to. So brother, if the devil has tempted you for something, No. It's just your time have not come for you to receive it. You have to take into consideration all these points we are studying here, they are all come together. They are joining together one another. You, can't, you have to remember, we have a point, I guess point number three was the sin. But the temptation with the sin is one thing. Because the temptation is going to cause the sin. Hallelujah. So the Lord is saying here, I will establish you in the same place I told you not to go to. Hallelujah. When you obey the calling that the Lord has put into you. Amen. In the book of Ephesians 2:10, all soul deal with our calling, which is the purpose, which is the produce of good works. When God calls you, you have to produce good works. That bless and help others and glorify God. And in the book of Matthew 5, 16, what does the Bible say? No one light, no one light a lamp and put it under basket. I like the basket rather than the table. But rather on the lampstand. And it gives light 
for all who are in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Amen. Brother and sister, on your conversion through the Holy Spirit, you have received this light. And you don't have to cover that light with a basket. The basket is a sin. You do not have to cover it. Make people see it. At school, make people know that you serve the most higher God. At workplace, let people know that the light of God is you. When people tell you you look different, it's not they're telling you you're smelling bad. It's not they're telling you, even though they call you alien, but if you know because of the light of God, so be it. Amen. But don't go collaborate with the sin because you want to be like them. If you do that, you have covered the light that God has put on you. Amen? And in verse 16, the Bible says, In the same way, let light, your light shine before others. Your ministry is for not for you. It's for it to shine before others. It's for you to give service to other people. Hallelujah. And people are going to glorify your father for the service you are giving them. Amen. Your calling is not just what you do for a living, but your divinely preplanned service for God that is your response to the great grace he has shown you in salvation. Hallelujah. And on this, I will make a note which is not in my note. I'm talking to you who is not married yet. I'm talking to you who is still, who is still in school. I'm talking to you who have not engaged in any type of relationship. My brother, my sister. One time in your life, God is going to call you. So, as you are a young man, a young woman right now, your parents have been telling you to focus on your study. You don't want to do it. And you have some goals and achievements that you want to achieve. But the devil has been tempted you. You are busy playing with the temptation, with the sin. But one thing you are not keeping in mind is that you are growing. Soon you're going to be 35, 25, 35. And soon the desire to be engaged, be someone's wife or someone's husband going to come. And soon the desire of focusing in one career going to come. But listen to this. The calling of God is going to be so heavy on you to the point that if, I say if, you didn't complete your own purpose, which is, is your school or your careers. At that time, God is calling you and you need to fulfill your own desire as a human being to have an education that can give you, that can provide you a career. But now God is calling you strong in the certain thing to do. I'm not saying that God is going to put conflict in those two things. No. But at that time, God, the desire of God is going to come on top of your own desire. And if you didn't achieve yours, you have to start to work on God calling. And now yours have, have to become secondary. You're going to do yours with a price to pay. And if you're not strong enough, you're going to not save God correctly because you have your own desire you need to fill. Why I'm saying this? Why are you so in school? Finish it. Why are you so young? Do 
what your parent, your family, your church, your community are helping you to fulfill. Because the time is going to come. You'll be a mother with a child. And God knows that you're a mother with a child. And God is going to put a calling and you're going to know this is what God created me to do. But at the same time, because you leave, you need to provide for yourself. Now, you're going to go to school part-time. You have a baby that you need to feed. You have the bill that you need to pay. And you have to do God's works. Heavy. But for the person who have achieved all he has to do when he was young, it's going to be easy. But don't blame God at that time to say, God, but why him is so easy? He's doing everything easy. Why not me? Hallelujah. So I'm just trying to tell you, if it's schooling, do it, finish it. If it's a career, get yourself established. Because the time will come, God is going to call you. And I'm saying this out of experience. Some of us, we came in this country already grown up. My brother Amir, Amir, can you wave? He has a family to feed. He came here as a migrant. Right now, he's studying. He's at school. My brother Azim, can you wave? Azim came here as an immigrant. He has a family that he needs to support. He's at school. What about myself? I'm in that stuck road. I have a vision for me and my family. And I have a God calling here. I have to make a decision to go to school to something that I know I can do for the rest of my 115 years before I pass. But I have a God calling desire that is heavy. At this time, I'm trying to figure out if I have to go to do my own schooling to fulfill my need or to establish myself in the path that the Lord is calling me. Dilemma. I'm sweating. So, Malia, Joshua, Benedict, uh, Amani, Wina, El Elion, El King, Marie Angels, any young one who's here, if you're in school, please finish what is your personal. Because there's a time the Lord God is going to call you. Diane, Frankie, Mika, Aji. I'm calling those who are, have not any responsibility yet. There's a time the Lord is going to call you. And you're going to know deep down inside of yourself. This is the calling. I have to do it. I have to respond to it. Because this is what's going to happen. If you say no, and you go, you do your own thing, how much you do it, you're still going to know I'm a Jonas. I'm running away from something greater than what I'm doing. When, I repeat, when God put that calling on you, and you leave it beside, you go to do you, you're still going to feel inside of, inside of you that there's no fulfillment in whatever you are doing. And you're going to know yourself. I'm just a Jonah. I'm running away from the great calling. Amen? Pastor finishes schooling. Pastor Francois finished our schooling. Now they are doing a ministry. Working with their own passion and with God calling together, Right? But some of us, we thought we need to supply faith for the family. <laughs> at the same time, we didn't know at a certain time, we're going to come in that intersection. God said you have to merge all these things together. And now, when you measure together, one of them, you're doing it with heavy price. You can't say, I'm tired, God. Let me continue. That was just a parenthesis. So, if the Lord has spoke to you, please don't take an offense because I call your name, but I feel just to address that. So, you don't say, they never tell me this. You know, my first two years in marriage, I was blaming my dad. I was saying, he didn't explain to me how is it going to look like. Right? So, every time God is going to give me grace to be here, 
I'll explain to you how it looks like. It's not always easy. In the book of Romans 12, 1 to 8, you're going to read on your own 1 to 8. I'm going to stop at 3. The Bible said this. Therefore, brother and sisters, in view of mercy of God, I urge you to present your body as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true worship. Do not be conformed to this age, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may discern what is the good, pleasing, and perfect will of God. For by the grace given to me, I tell you, I, I tell everyone among you not to think of himself more highly than he should think. Instead, think sensibly as God has distributed a measure of faith to each one. Why this verse come to point? I'm not standing before you as the one who knows everything. Each one of you, each and every one of us, God has deposited something that we need to benefit. The person who's going to make me cut it outside over there, I mean beignet, for us to eat after that service, I don't have that technique of grabbing that uh, powder or flavor putting on the pounds. The person who can come and read or sing, the person who can play the instrument, each of us will have a different grace. But every time you do it, do it according to the will of God. Hallelujah. Do it according to the will of God. And when you do it, do it for God to receive glory and honor. Do it just, don't do it just because I want to do it and get ready of it. Otherwise, it's going to be a show. Hallelujah. God has a calling. That is tailored, made for you. God has a calling that is tailored, made for you. What I mean by that? Each one of us, we have a calling that is perfect, only designed for you. So don't envy someone else's calling. Appreciate it. Thank God for it. But focus on the one the Lord has given you. But remember this. God is calling you. God will call you. Hallelujah. We get into our point 14. Obedience. Obedience is the response of our spiritual growth. The connection between the new nature that God put within us at salvation and our obedience to him is so vital that we want to establish, establish it Face. Obedience to the word of God. And the calling through the salvation we receive in God. is something at that time you came here up front. At that time you went into the water baptism. The obedience is something that have to take root first before you start growing. Hallelujah. God announced in Jeremiah 31, 31 to 31 and 31 to, 40, uh, to 34, the Bible says, He announced that some days He would relate to human beings in a new way called the new covenant. Let me read it. Look. The days are coming. This is Lord's declaration. When I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, this one will not be like the covenant I made with their ancestors on the day I took them by hands. Notice, here the Lord say. With your ancestors, the covenant that God made with them, God took them by hands. He walked them in the desert. He took them by hands in Egypt. He walked them in the desert. Hallelujah. To lead them out of the land of Egypt, 
my covenant that they broke, even though I am their master, the Lord declaration. Your ancestors, even though the Lord was their masters, they ate manners. They have the stream of water where there was no water. The Lord led them, but they broke that covenant. Instead, this is the covenant I will make with the house of Israel after those days. The Lord's declaration. I will put my teaching within. Within. I will put my teaching within them and write it on their heart. I will be their God and they will be my people. So obedience is not something you have to do an effort to have it. Brother and sister, the day you receive that baptism, the day you receive Jesus as your Savior, the obedience is inside of you. Don't look obedience somewhere else. It's inside of you. You have just the same way with the sin through temptation, you have to collaborate to becoming a sinner. Obedience also, you have to collaborate with the voice of the Holy Spirit that talks to you every time when you are facing a temptation. Hallelujah. This covenant is not based on the law and animal sacrifice, but on the once and for all sacrifice of Jesus Christ. So Jesus died for you. For you to become a son of God. And Jesus obeyed the Father by going on the cross. Amen? The main distinctive of the new covenant is this. I will put my teaching within them and write it on their heart. That's verse 33. That we just read. So, on the first covenant, if the Lord was walking with them, holding their hands, you know, someone can hold your hands to lead you. One thing is for you obey, for someone to hold your hands. How many times from age two, when they start walking, to the age five, or sometimes six, when he's trying to hold the hands of kids, and going with them. Parents, are you here? How many times they trying to get out of your hands? How many times your kids trying to get out of your hands? They want to get their own pace to start working on their own. So this is what the children of Israel, our ancestors did. The Lord was working with them, but they were shooking the hands of the Lord. Said, no, we want to walk by ourselves. In the place that they are supposed to go and reach their destiny, they did for what? 40 years. You, to reach your goal, how many years you want to do it? How many years are you going to do it? So, if them they did 40 years, by you now, the word of God is engraved in your heart. Don't do another 40 years. Don't do another 100 years. You know, there's one prayer I pray. God, if I want to be, if you created me, no. God, you created me to be a multi-millionaire. I don't want to be that in 60. Because some fun that I need to do on my, I'm already 40, so on my 45, 50s, I'm not going to do it. Hallelujah. Isn't it the design that the country been designed for us, for us to work all our youth until you are 65, they give you a retirement, then you can't even travel. Get a retirement in 65 years and you're trying to go to uh, Disneyland and go on the roller coaster. You come down, you're dead already because you can't go on the roller coaster, isn't it? But when you're becoming a millionaire, when you are theories, which means you can go on the roller coaster, which means you can do all the fun things, which means you can buy that expensive sport car and drive it as crazy. 
But now, you're becoming a millionaire. You are 70 years old. You are afraid to, you know, see. If you are driving your car, you get inside of your vehicle. Watch the dashboard. You see, the kilometers is from zero to two forties. Believe me, that vehicle of yours has been designed for you to drive it to two forty kilometers an hour. How many people never drove their car past two hundred? Um, have you drove your car speed to two hundred? No, you did. Dian did. Thank God for you. So you have to give it a try. <laughs> right? <laughs> so look now. You are 75 years old, millionaire with a rose rose. The edition that is was customized. And all you can do is drive it 100 kilometers an hour. What a waste. But you can't do it because you're going to have a heart attack inside. You're already 70. Amen? So brother, obey God so you can receive all the blessing God created you to have while you are so young, so you can enjoy the benefit of it. Amen? I move on to finish. The fact that these desires are built in or internal is crucial because it is revolutionized our understanding of obedience. So, I just explained that already. The fact that God engraved obedience into our heart is giving us how we need to understand God. Amen? I will blame myself for coming to this country late. But you who came here young and born here, don't blame anyone. Even your parent is going to rebuke you when you try to blame them if you don't be succeed in this life. But the only way you can be succeeded, whether you came here as a grown-up or you were born here, just obey God. And he's going to make you understand things. Not only as God gave us the law, but when he made us new creations in Christ, he also gave us the internal desire to obey his law by walking in his way. And that we see it in the book of Philippians 2, 12 to 13. The Bible said this, Therefore, dear friends, just as you have always obeyed, so now, not only in my presence, but even more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who is working in you both to will and to works according to his good purpose. He said, both to will and to work. Amen? Jesus called our obedience his yoke, which is also said it is the source of the rest for those who are weary. And I try to bring this image of yoke because sometimes we speak about the yoke. But what is a yoke? The yoke, you sit between these two animals. That thing's there, they call it a yoke. You see that man, that young man there who's carrying the water. The thing that he put and put two baskets there, they call it yoke, human yoke. So when you have a yoke of Christ and you see these animals, in the old age, they were doing, doing the farming like this. And you can see when they are growing food, you see it's going in one straight line. Why? Because this animal, they are walking in a straight line. One can't make his own way, the other one can't go his own way. Why? Because the yoke is guiding them to go straight. This young man is carrying the water over there. He can't go whatever he wants to go. No, he has to go straight because the yoke is guiding him. As long as he starts moving around, all the water is going to start going, spreading around. Amen? So when Jesus is calling us, Jesus is calling our obedience is yoke, we have to have Jesus in us. And when the obedience of Jesus becoming our yoke, we're going to walk in obedience in a straight line. And the reason we walk like this, look at this animal, how many feet they have. 
How many? Four. With a yoke, they walk in one straight line. You, how many feet do you have? With a yoke, you can't even walk in the straight line. Why the animal can get it, obey, why us, we cannot. Brother and sister, you need to repent after this service. Matthew 11, and in this note I say, Matthew 11, 28 and 30, the Bible says, Come to me, all of you who are weary and burden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me because I am lowly and humble in heart and you will find rest for your soul. For my yoke is easier and, and my burden is light. Amen? How many times you have been trying it on your own, you're not getting it? Brother and sister, how many times you have been trying on your own, you don't get it. The Bible says, come to me, all of you who are worried. So, if you're not coming, you're going to continue to be worried. Hallelujah. And take the yoke of God, the guidance of God. Amen. Obedience activates the word of God. The the word and the work of God in our lives. And that you can read it in the book of James 1, 19 to 25. Now we are moving on our point, the final point, point 15. So this series contains 15 points. And the last one is maturity. Maturity is the goal of spiritual growth. When we're growing the purpose is for us to becoming mature. Apostle Paul challenged often the infantile current to grow up. In the book of 1 Corinthians 14, 20, the Bible said this, brother and sister, don't be, cho- don't be childish in your thinking, but be infant in regard to evil and evil. Add out in your thinking. Amen? How many times up to now you carry the Bible, but your behavior before God, you're still being an infant. You're not even a child yet. You're an infant. Amen? Spiritual maturity is the ability to consistently View and live a life from the perspective of the spirit of the spirit rather than the flesh, with the result that we maximize our God-given capacity to bring him glory. Spiritual maturity is our ability to live a life that is not put God in shame. Hallelujah. And God gave you all the capacity for you to be mature and live a life that is full of purposes. Amen. In another words, mature, mature Christians consistently see things the human eyes can't see when you're becoming mature. You start seeing things nobody sees. I'll give you an example. When we finish our... T- the day we will finish our 21 days of prayer, the Sunday before that, the servant of God who was with us here, God showed him something that all of us we didn't see. But she didn't tell the church. She went home. The God rebuked her. Why you didn't tell the church what I show you? The second Sunday, she came to give that testimony. What did she saw the previous Sunday? 
She saw as we were prayer, the angels came here. One line straight, one line straight. They were full of them here. That the first Sunday. The second Sunday, as she was coming to give a testimony, before even she came on the stage, the Lord is showing her again. The angel came the same way they came the previous Sunday. They came straight here, came straight here, but this time was different. They came up, up to here and stand beyond the choir that was singing. Not just beyond the choir, they were standing also beyond each and every one of people that was here. But why she was the only one saw that, not all of us. When we are mature spiritually, we saw things, things that not everyone seen. But to make that testimony correct, God didn't just reveal to one person in this second Sunday. Our sister also was sitting on the other side. She was not singing that Sunday here. But as she was sitting over there, she sensed that that was a different people standing beyond each and every one of us here. She gave the testimony after the first one. The only time you can sense that is when you are mature. And they don't have a special grace to see those things. You have that grace. But the problem is you have refused to grow up. The Bible says an heritage infant is not different from a slave as long as he remains a child. Look, if I leave my children a billion dollars of will after my past, as long as they remain children, they are not different from the poor and from the slave. Because that note can be sitting there, but because they are not taking it, reading it, and understand who was our, our father and what heritage we have, they're going to suffer. Amen? So, brother and sister, don't blame God why you're not seeing your future. Your future is in you. You have just to grow up and you will see it. A mature Christian, they hear things that the most sharp hearing on the earth cannot detect. People who work in the industry that make a lot of noise, Angulo might know that, uh, Dono Rodrik, my brother in the back there, we usually do hearing tests. And they put you in the cabinet. There's no noise filter that cabinet. They give you headset you put on you. They start playing sound beep. And those sound beep go to the point that you can't even hear it, but you have to detect it. Now they give you a 2020 hearing. If you didn't hear the last one, which barely you can't hear it, which means you're maybe 19 percentage of listening. But a mature Christian, in the midst of noise, in the midst of me talking here, God may be speaking to you right now that people can't even detect what the Lord is saying to you. But the only reason you can hear that, listening to God, because you are mature and your hearing has been tuned in the volume that is in the frequency of the Holy Spirit. But if you, which means all of us, we have that capacity. We need just to grow up, to be in that position, to listen when God is speaking. Amen. And a mature Christian, and they have the thought that they did not originate on their own because the Holy Spirit is the help is helping them to think God thought. A mature Christian, they have thought that come in them that is not them generate those thoughts. It's the Holy Spirit that putting those thoughts in them. Amen? How many times in a meeting, in uh, anything you are doing, you have a thought that came to you that even yourself, you know, no. Two seconds ago, I didn't think about this. That only God can do it. Only God can do that. Amen? But when you are mature, God will give you thought that man cannot generate. Hallelujah? The Holy Spirit is free to send his message clearly 
and directly to the spiritual to the spiritually mature. Hebrew 5 11 to 14, the Bible said this. We have a great deal to say about this, and it is difficult to explain since you have, come, you have become too lazy to understand. Although by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you the basic principle of God's revelation again. You need milk, not solid food. Now, everyone who lives on milk is an experience with the message about the righteousness. Because he is an infant, but solid food is for the mature, for those whose sense have been trained to distinguish between goods and evil. Hallelujah. You need to grow. Stop drinking milk. Sometimes stop go in the things that is not relevant. Hallelujah. Because mature Christians, they understand things. The promise to the person who is listening to the Spirit is that he or she will understand what has been freely given to us by God. And that is in the book of 1 Corinthians 2, 12. Mature believers have transformed lives that reflect and transfer the value of the kingdom of God. Mature believers have transformed lives that reflect and transfer the value of kingdoms of God. That is on the book of, you can read the book of 2 Corinthians 3, 17 to 18. Now, transformation is the demonstration that the information has taken root. So we have listened to all this. The transformation in your life is what is going to make sense that the information, the word of God we have been receiving, have been taking root in us. Hallelujah. In conclusion, Brother and sister, since we have this ministry because we are shown mercy, for me to have this ministry of standing here to minister to you today, for Citywide to be a ministry to stand here to minister to the nations, it's because God has shown us mercy. Therefore, the mercy of God is too valuable for you who haven't received Christ as the Savior of their life, of your life. For you, who have planted your family to live a godly life, we are not special. My brother and my sister are not special. It's by the mercy and the grace of God that we have been called into this ministry of serving Christ. We do not give up. Instead, we have to renounce secret and shameful things. The day of our salvation, we renounce, we say no to certain things that the devil was giving us, proposed us through temptation. We say no to that. And so, the Lord, we gave way to the Lord to use us. Not only acting deceitfully or distorting the words of God, but con condemning ourselves before God to everyone's conscience by an open display of the faith. What do I mean by that? I, becoming, I choose to become accountable for all of you. Because I choose to stand here. Therefore, my walking before God, I have to think twice. Not to give away to the devil. But I want to do everything 
to give glory, honor to our God. Hallelujah. So, brother and sister, if you still feel that through temptation, although the salvation has come into your life, but you are not obeying God fully, the God is calling you to pray, to repent. For those who haven't received Christ as master and savior of their life, God is still calling you. And you have to leave this word of God that we went through for you to become a mature. God is calling you. That was the word of God. I'm going to invite pastor to lead the church in prayer. May God bless you. So great, so powerful. Bless you, Brother Arnold. There are a lot of things that has been said, and we are going to pray. It's, um, it will be a great opportunity to have this as a Bible study. Um, they told me quickly that even though we're going to have our leaders meeting, we cannot escape this Bible study. So we need to, to honor that. We are going to pray. And today, as Brother Arnold said, this is the last portion of this kingdom living. God, has, God is calling all of us as a church. He's calling you, he's calling me with all the temptation, with all the trials, all the tribulations, anything that then comes on our way. We need to know that we still have room to grow. Amen, amen. It's only a dead boat that cannot grow. As long as you live, you still have a room, you still have a chance to change your life, to turn around and to give yourself to the Lord. The Bible says, come out from among them and be separated unto him. Brother and sister, it's a call. And call, you see, when the one thing I believe about the scripture, the Bible is God's commandment. It's the a, it's a will of God. Also, it's a God's commandment. And commandment is an order where there's no choice. You don't say, I don't feel like. But at the end of the day, there will be retributions. For those who have said, I'm coming back to you, God. And those who are going to say, I don't mind how I'm living my life. It's the end that will determine the course of the day. Let's be on our feet and we are going to pray. I'm going to invite you to pray, please. I would like you to pray for yourself. Everything that has been said today, they are so profound. The calling, I'm going to, to stick on the last one, the calling. God is calling you. Don't, don't say, oh, I don't want to become a part. He never called you to become a part. It's okay, but he's calling you so you can come into his kingdom. The call of God is for you to live a, the life, a sinful life, to come to know him and to work with him and to walk with him. I would like you to pray. I would like you to pray. Let's sing this song. I surrender on. Worship team, if you can just step forward. And we're going to sing this song. I would like you to give yourself to him. I would like you to cry out to him. God is so faithful. He can hear you. He can answer all your dilemmas. He can answer your prayers. And this is the time. Hallelujah. Can you just lift up your hands and worship me and sing with me? Surrender your life to Him. Surrender your life to Him, my brother. There's no any other way out. Oh my God, as we sing, as we come to you, Lord, we have a 
you're standing here at this time if you know you are here there's something something that you want to give to the Lord do not hold it back there's one thing that Jacob could not understand and we know how he was living his life he came to a point he have to give something to God and say all of us we have Jacob inside of us you may not know what I'm carrying every day, but this Jacob has to come out. You may say, Pastor says, we have got Jacobs. Because what was ruling his life, it was, they call it conman. He was a conman. He knew how to manipulate things so he can have it all. The Bible says he left his, his life, I mean, his, 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 his father's home because the, the, the big brother told him, one day I will kill you. You took my birthright, but I will kill you. And he was afraid. Jacob left. He went to live with his uncle. By living, at that time, he was living there, God had to bring that, that film that we call cinema. He had to bring that, 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 that life again. And his uncle beca became the one who will frustrate him. Because God was looking at something. It was like, Jacob, I would like you to just give it to me. Give your life to me. And we know what ha happened to Jacob. He married the first, um, he was supposed to marry uh, Rachel. They gave him Leah. After seven years, he took his wife. And then there was too much conflict. He rushed. He went home. On his way home, he knew that his big brother would kill him. He, he, he started preparing things. All the promising things. I'm going to send my wives, my children, all the things, all the goody things. And the Bible says he, he, he was so heavy. In, he went alone and started praying. And God said, this is the time I'm going to touch your life. Today, God wants to touch your life. If you are here, say, there's something heaviness inside of me. We have heard what the, the message of today, the calling, temptation, sin, especially the calling of God upon your life. Do not, do not, uh, how should I say, do not take it lightly. I don't care. It's my life. If you are here, say, you know what? I want to give it. I just want to try it out. I've tried everything and I failed. Let me try Jesus, please. 
just raise up your hands. We're going to pray for you. You may say, Pastor, I've already received Christ alone. I know you've already received Christ the Lord and Savior. But there, there's something inside of you. This spirit of Jacob still nagging. There's something holding you back. Every day, there's something you want to do for the Lord, but you find yourself doing something else. Please, I beg you. Are you here? Just wave and we're going to pray for you. Hallelujah. I'm very patient. I'm very, very patient. If there's nothing and we're going to pray, I would like you to say, Lord, anything causing me from not obeying your call, take it away. If it's money, take it away. Sometimes God has to take money from you. If the money will destroy your life, he will take it. Take it away. Sometimes we say, well, okay, I'm just praying when I'm going to have my family, I'll start serving the Lord. God has given you a family excuses. Or maybe when, I, when I'm going to buy a car so I can drive and go to church. And God's give you a means of transportation, issues always. Problems here and there, but you cannot serve the Lord. Maybe you are here, your family is not here. But you never pay attention that you are receiving the word of God, but you don't care about your family. Hey, there will be a day God's going to ask you, where is your wife? Where is your husband? Where are your children? We don't marry because, because we just want to marry. We support each other to make heaven. I would like you to close your eyes and pray. I would like you to pray and say, God, anything that is stopping my family to know you, anything that is stopping me to know you way better, anything that is stopping this ministry from moving forward, your own life, for instance, anything that is preventing me from seeing the, 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 the upcoming, the uprisings, something greater than what you have seen. Lord, take it away. Take it away at this time of the day. I would like you to start, just start praying. Just pray in the spirit. Hallelujah. Begin to pray. Lift up your voice, church. Worship team, you have your microphone? Pray with me. Don't be so cold. I would like you to pray with me. I would like you to raise up your voice and pray. Engage in prayer this time of the day. Pray for someone who is not here. You may say, I've finished all my prayers. What about your brother? What about your neighbor? What about your sister? Someone is looking for her to see this day. Maybe to you are some, someone, a brother, it's all the way to the hospital. Maybe you know someone who is going through divorce at this time of the day. Yes, it's not a joke. We cannot laugh at all that one. But it's time to say, Lord, look at my brother. Look at my sister. He has been around divorce in his life, oh Lord, my God. Be merciful, Lord, my God. Touch your people's life at this time of the day. Oh, Jesus, precious Lord. Hallelujah. Divine favor. Remove any corruption into our lives, Lord my God. Remove any corruption inside of us, precious Father. As we pray, as we praise your name, as we pray, as we cry unto you, today and forevermore. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Hallelujah. Amen. At this time, we're going to give our offering. I'm going to invite Dian to pray for the offering. If you want to give through the means of her online, it transfer. And also for those who have received their tax receipt, please make sure that you go through all the your, your bank accounts. Try to go through your giving. So if there's any discrepancy, then that we, you can send the, the quick notes so the accountant and treasurer they can try to change and to issue a correct a corrected version of your tax receipt. Because very soon you have to do your taxes, please. Go through your notes, through your banking. Those who give online, if you need an envelope at the back, you can wave and the usher will provide you with the envelope. For those who want to give through e-transfer, praise the Lord, hallelujah. For those who want to give through their checks, you can just write, give in to Citywide Cross Church and write your name clearly, please. So to give is another ways of obeying God's call. I never say this, but I, you should know about it. You don't give when, when you have the means. Otherwise, you'll never give. Someone who wants to give, don't say, because I'm going to it until I have enough. How much money is enough money? Go home and ask your daddy, ask your mommy, ask your brother, how much money is, 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 is enough money? You can say that there's no, you can count that. We're always, we're always in need. But those who will give, they'll give because they are faithful. 
We want to buy things for the children for their Sunday school. We want to pay the bills for this place. There are other things that we need to care of. What can we do when we stop giving? Oh, God will supply. Where? Through your pocket, through your wallet. God is here to supply our, the needs of this church through your wallet. You should be praying for your wallet every day because God will be using your wallet to supply the needs of this ministry. Amen, amen. Oh, pastor, God's going to send angels. You are the angel. God has sent you as an angel. When I, I look at you, I can see you with wings. You are the angel who have come here and God's going to bless you at the end of the day. Amen, amen. So when you give to the Lord, give because you believe you are giving to the Lord. Diane is going to pray for the offering. We are going to sing a song and dance to our Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. I believe Pastor has said it all. If we're being blessed, um, we give because it's a command. And through these series, by the grace of God um, that he gave Brother Arnold, he spoke about spiritual growth. And I know it's not one of his definition, but to have spiritual growth is to apply God's word. You don't just read the Bible for information. You must take what word God says as law, as truth, and apply to your word. So right now, we're just going to pray for our offering. For those who are looking for work, I know it's been very difficult, um, but God is faithful. Amen? Amen. So let's lift up our hands and pray for our offering. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. Thank you for this time that you've given us. Thank you, Lord, for time spent in your presence, through fellowship, through hearing of your word. Father God, I thank you for this series of spiritual growth. I pray, Almighty, that we'll not read your word and just read it for the sake of information. I pray that we'll apply it. And when it comes to the command that you've given us to give, what belongs to you, I pray that, Lord, that we will not be reluctant. I pray that we will we'll act quickly in obedience to your word. Those who are struggling financially, whatever it is that they need, that whatever it is that they're lacking, Father God, because of their faithfulness, because of their obedience, Father God, I pray that you bless them. May you expand their territory. I pray for those who are looking for work. I pray, Father God, for your favor. May it follow them. May it go before them. Yes, I know we're living in a time of recession where all around people are getting laid off. I pray, Almighty, for your divine favor. For your divine favor. We are the children of the Most High God. And Lord God, I know that you will not put us to shame. So I pray for those who are crying out, wondering how they're going to pay their rent, wondering how they're going to support their family. Lord, may they trust and believe that you are their provider. We thank you, Jesus, because we know that this ministry will never lack to advance and to reach out to those who are around us. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Before we close and share our grace, let us sing this song, Unto the Lord Be the Glory. We're just once again exalting God for what he has done. As we go into this week, may you go into the week with the hope and expectation from the Lord. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you can be on your feet before we share the grace.
Jesus. Great things he has done, greater things he will do. May we receive that word in our lives. Amen. Amen. If you can please um, raise your hand as we share the grace. And may you have a great week. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. May you be blessed. Thank you so much. Amen.